Thank you for joining us. I'm Naiva Reynoso. LA County has put forth a massive response effort to the coronavirus. In this episode, we're giving you an inside look at the county operations supporting residents across the county during this national emergency. We'll take you behind the scenes of virtual story time at the county library and show you how you can adopt your next furry forever companion for free. But first, Project Room Key is preventing the spread of COVID-19 in our communities by temporarily housing seniors and medically vulnerable people experiencing homelessness. Take a look. And then, so then they take all your stuff and put it in here, okay? And then they're gonna put you in a separate van with everybody. Not So today, LA Family Housing, in partnership with the county, with Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, and all of our partner agencies, are moving people into a new Project Room Key Hotel. This is an encampment with about 50 individuals who are connected to each other in various ways. It also happens to be predominantly African American. That was real important to us, recognizing how disproportionate the black community has experienced death within COVID-19. It's the first time we've moved an entire encampment. Because of the community and connections within that encampment, we felt it was very important for the success of those individuals if they were able to move together. They see this whole community working together. It's not just LA Family Housing. It's a whole community that's come together recognizing their needs. COVID-19 has really presented an opportunity for us to invest the resources needed to bring people indoors. We're gonna bring thousands of people indoors this is just the first step. After being underneath that bridge for so long, it's a pleasant relief. I see a bathtub, we can go soak in the bathtub. Um, we have a daily shower, we have food being brought in. You're not struggling as much to get your basic needs met. This is somebody's brother, this is somebody's mom, somebody's auntie, somebody's uncle, somebody's dad on the streets. And we all need to be helped. Every day, members of the USC Keck Street Medicine Team and the Union Station Homeless Services take to the streets to provide health care for people experiencing homelessness. It's become especially important during the COVID-19 pandemic. You know what's going on with the whole COVID 19, yeah. right? Okay. So we're here with Union Station Homeless Services in collaboration with USC Keck Street Medicine Team. Our goal is to identify and build relationships with the most vulnerable homeless individuals um, in that community. It's a blessing because sometimes we don't know where to go. You know, we don't know what's out there. I mean, it's, you know, it was nice they came towards us, you know. Are you yeah. interested in treatment? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah. You'd be willing to go today? Yeah. In street medicine, we leave the comfort of our offices, understanding that the folks sleeping out here um, just can't access health care the way other people do. The idea is that anything that's happening within the four walls can be delivered on the street with the same quality. It's really just about them knowing that somebody knows that they're out there, cares that they're out there. Y, y Jorge, ¿cuándo fue la última vez que se fue a una emergencia, a un hospital? ¿Algún tiempo? Oh, muchos yeah. años. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think this is a true team-based care. It's not just the team of, you know, the medical staff, the outreach staff, or community health workers, but it's the patient's community and, you know, kind of larger encampments like this, kind of identifying, oh, you need to check out this guy. Oh, I'm worried about my friend here. Can you go check on, on her? Um, you know, they're part, of, they're part of this team effort too. Really having the USC Keck um, Street Medicine team 
on here. It really aligns with our philosophies at Union Station and our goal with you know, helping and providing services to the most vulnerable. The work to stop the spread of COVID-19 is an all-county effort, including volunteers from the Alternative Public Defender's Office. They pitched in to help the residents of Skid Row by preparing hand washing kits. Take a look. Today, we are trying to help with the COVID crisis by putting together kits for the homeless. We come in contact with the homeless because many of them are our clients. And through that contact, we have found that many of them need supplies, hygiene supplies. So today, we came together recognizing that some of our clients are some of the most vulnerable and needy and put together a group of us putting kits that we will distribute to the homeless. So we're putting together 100 kits to take down to our partner Homeless Health Care and um, pass them out with Homeless Health Care to some of the people experiencing homelessness down on Skid Row. In the kits we have a face towel, we have mini soaps, mini um, body wash, and then some alcohol prep pads with 70% alcohol. Oh, and also a face mask. And we understand that a lot of the people down on Skid Row don't have the ability to wash your hands as much as they would need to, to wash up throughout the day. We do a lot behind the scenes and in the courtroom, obviously to help our clients and to help the community, but it was really important for us to actually be out in the community and show our face and make contact with these people so they know that we're doing everything we can to help them right now. We were really just taken aback by the, the kindness and the goodness of heart. Our people don't get a lot of the, um, those types of offers a lot. We're very appreciative to the Alternate Public Defender's Office for, for joining and partnering with us. We want to do whatever we can, our part, to help the most vulnerable in our community. So we thought this would be a good way to help. As families stay safer at home, the LA County Library is helping transport kids to magical worlds by offering virtual story time twice a day. Check this out and let your imagination take over. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Regina Hernandez, and I'm a children's librarian right here at the beautiful East Los Angeles Library. Today, we're hosting our digital story time, which is being run all across Facebook Live and Instagram Live, Monday through Thursday at 11 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. Here at the LA County Library, we wanted to make sure we were still reaching out to our community, especially during these challenging times we decided to have our virtual story time so we can still have that very important program accessible to our guests and communities. Polka dot dogs wear hats and cats do not. So today we have books that will be read aloud from selected publishers who actually changed their policies so that we could read their books online and archive them up until the end of June. So you'll be seeing some fun songs that are fit for toddlers and the school age community and also uh, books, finger plays, and a little bit of movement as well. She'll be riding six white horses, she'll be riding six white horses, she'll be riding six white horses when she comes, whoa there. Even though our doors are closed to the public, we are still here for our communities. So our lobbies are open for patrons to pick up holds along with activity kits for families to take home and enjoy. And we also offer a 90-day digital library card to access all our wonderful electronic resources. Because indeed, hats are for everyone. Our goal with virtual story time is to make sure that children are still engaged with learning and literacy. We clap our hands for all our friends. We wave goodbye like this. Thank you, everyone. Staying safer at home isn't easy, but one county department is hoping to make it just a little better. The Department of Animal Care and Control is offering free pet adoptions thanks to a grant from the Petco Foundation. Here's how it works. With those fee waived adoptions, all that's being paid for right now is license fees for the prospective animal. And if the animal is unable to be altered prior to leaving the shelter, there's a trust deposit fee that's refunded once the animal is brought back for that surgery. 
So some of the animals through our seven care centers uh, can range anywhere from dogs and cats uh, to also livestock where we have sheep, goats, and horses. Before you come in or call into the care center, I encourage everyone to go on our website, look at our available animals, find potential candidates for adoption so that we can better help you. The county wouldn't be able to support our community without its incredible staff. Meet DCFS Children's Services Administrator Patricia Taylor. She's bringing her skills as a social worker to the streets and serving people experiencing homelessness during the COVID-19 crisis. I'm Patricia Taylor. I'm a Children's Services Administrator with the Department of Children and Family Services. My job as a disaster services worker with LA Family Housing is to engage in homeless outreach, to do testing, and to do public information about how they can stay safe, and if necessary, get them into quarantine and housing sites. This is a great place to work right now because I get to use my skills as a social worker, as a clinician, and really get out into the community, be at ground zero, hands-on, and be part of a team that's really actually helping people that wouldn't otherwise normally have food, water, or be able to get to safety and their health would be at risk. My ultimate goal is just to be part of something bigger than myself, pay it forward and give back so that we're all here helping each other. Thanks for joining us. We leave you now with a show of solidarity to essential workers on the front lines by county leaders and employees. We'll see you next time on LA County Close Up.